Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of Mr. Boskin Does Some Math. Today we're doing Illustrative Math, Grade 8, Unit 3, Lesson Number 5. Our first problem here is a restaurant offers delivery for their pizzas. The total cost is a delivery fee added to the price of the pizzas. One customer pays $25 to have two pizzas delivered. Another customer pays $58 for five pizzas. How many pizzas are delivered to a customer who pays $80? So let's start out by finding out what our unit rate is. So we know we paid $25 for two pizzas, but part of that's the delivery. We know we paid $58 for five pizzas, but part of that's the delivery. But the difference between those was three pizzas. What was the difference in price between those? $58 subtract $25 is $33. So we paid $33 more and we got three pizzas more. So that seems to me like we pay $11 per pizza. That $11 a pizza will be our unit rate or our slope for this. If we are paying $11 per pizza, how much do we pay for delivery? Well, two pizzas at $11 a piece would be $22. 23, 24, 25, that seems like $3. for the delivery. Now let's check with this other one. $58 for five pizzas. Five pizzas at $11 each would be $55. 56, 57, 58. That also seems like $3 for delivery. That means if we're paying $3 for delivery, let's see if we can quickly write an equation for this, because when in doubt, make an equation. Y equals 11x, because that's our per pizza. Per means that's our unit rate, our multiplier, plus the delivery fee, plus $3. How many pizzas are delivered to a customer who pays $80? Well, we could plug that in here or we could think about it a little bit if they pay eighty dollars three of its delivery 80 minus 3 is 77 how many pizzas at eleven dollars a piece are 77 dollars that is seven pizzas we can check that quickly by plugging that into our equation too and that's a total, so it would be y, 80 equals 11x plus 3, subtract 3 from each side, 77 equals 11x. To isolate the x, we do divide by 11, divide by 11, 7 equals x. Hey, that's the same thing we got over here. We thought about it, solved it that way, and we used the equation and solved it that way, got the same answer. Seven pizzas either way. Okay, next question. To paint a house, a painting company charges a flat rate of $500 for supplies plus $50 for each hour of labor. $500 for supplies is our starting point, starting value, y-intercept, $50 for each hour of labor, that means that's going to be our unit rate. Our equation will be y equals 50x plus 500. How much would the painting company charge to paint a house that needs 20 hours of labor? y equals 50, substitute in 20, or 20 hours of labor plus 500 y equals 50 times 20. 50 times 20. 1,000. Plus 
four supplies. 1,000 plus 500, Y equals 1,500, 1,500. How about a house that needs 50 hours? We can do the same thing. Y equals 50. Substitute in for X, 50 hours plus 500. Y equals 50 times 50. 50 times 50. 2500 plus 500 dollars for supplies add those together that's three thousand dollars so 20 hours was fifteen hundred dollars and 50 hours was three thousand dollars Draw a line representing the relationship between X numbers hours it takes the painting company to finish the house, Y the total cost of painting the house, okay we know they charge $500 for supplies, $500 for supplies. That's our intercept, our starting value. We know a 20 hour house costs $1,500. And we know a 50 hour house costs $3,000. Okay. Find the slope of the line. Let me draw a nice little triangle. Our run is 20 from our rise is 1,000 from 500 to 1,500. Slope is 1,000 over 20. Simplify that fraction, knock off a zero from each. That's an easy way to do it. 100 over 2, 100 over 2 is 50 over 1. Our slope is 50 over 1. What's the meaning of slope in this context? What does the slope mean? Well, we already kind of talked about it. It's $50 per hour. means they charge $50 an hour to paint. Okay, next problem. What's coming up next? Tyler and Elena are on the cross country team. Tyler's distance and times for training are shown on the graph. Elena's distance and times for training are given by the equation y equals 8.5x where x is a distance and y is a time. So first thing I'd like to check here is y time x distance, does that match our graph? Yes, x is distance, y is time. Those match. So we can compare them. Who ran farther in 10 minutes? Well, let's check. This one we have on the graph, that's 10 minutes. That looks like about one and a quarter. Now our other person, we have an equation. Y is a time, 10 equals 8.5x. I substituted in our time into the equation to isolate the x, divide each side by 8.5, 10 
10 divided by 8.5 is... Hey, show me the rest of the number. 1.17. Those cancel. X equals 1.176. One seven six, I'll call it one eight. Who ran farther? One point one eight miles, or I looked at that and I was thinking it was one and a quarter miles. Who ran farther? Tyler, because one and a quarter miles is further than one point one eight miles. Calculate each runner's pace in minutes per mile. Ooh, Elena's given to us. If the equation is y equals 8.5x in minutes per mile, that's our unit rate, that's our slope. Now let's look up here at Tyler. Looks like Tyler goes distance. That would be our unit rate. We have a run of one and a rise of two, four, six, eight, and one extra line. How much is each one of those? Six, one, two, three, four, five. Each one of those is divided into, from six to eight is divided into six chunks. That means each one is, each line is a third. which means Tyler's pace is eight and one third minutes per mile. Who ran faster? Well, what's faster, running a mile in eight and a half minutes or running a mile in eight and a third minutes? Tyler is faster because running a mile in eight and a third minutes is slightly faster than running it in eight and a half minutes. Ooh, this looks like our last question for today. Write an equation for the line that passes through two, five, and six, seven. I'll be nice and sketch this out quickly. Two, five is something like that. Six, seven is something like that. What's this gonna look like? Our rise from five to seven is two, and our run from two to six is four. That means our slope, I'll call M, is two over four, which is one over two. If our slope is one half, Remember using our properties of similar triangles, we know that y minus the y value of a point over x minus the x value of a point has to be equal to the slope. y minus, let's pick a point, I'll use this one. The y value of that is five, the x value of that is two. That's the equation of the line that goes through 2, 5, and 6, 7. Okay, that was our last question for today. This has been another episode of Mr. Boskin Does Some Math. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.